Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Braddock Media's Toy and Collectible Reviews. On this week's episode, I'm going to be featuring the Boba Fett Premium Format Exclusive Edition from Sideshow Collectible and Toys. As you've noticed, the set's a little bit different, the lighting's different. I'm praying that the sound is okay on this, but we are coming to you from my kitchen. My studio, unfortunately, the heat is still broken, and for the next month we'll probably be here. It's a little bit cold and chilly up here in Canada, and there's just no way that I can do it. So hopefully this all works out. On this week's episode, I'm going to cover over all the different pieces of the statue, the box art. Can't go into too many facts about Boba Fett because I covered over that in the Deluxe Hot Toys Edition video review that I did. So if you want to find that out, go back, check out that video that was last month. This statue is pretty cool. I'll tell you why it's a little bit 50-50 for me in the breakdown. And then after that, I'll give a shout out to all the different artists that worked on it. A 360 video panned for almost four and a half minutes of all the different sides of this statue. Now that you know what we're doing, let's go over and check out box art. Ooh. Box art is a little bit boring. I mean, it's um, normally they're really cool. They're like artistic backgrounds, really nifty things that kind of work around us. But this literally looks like a 12 inch sideshow figure box. They really did not go and put any type of extra mileage into this one. I know it's a little odd to have this segment of the show. Most people are like, who cares? You throw this in the closet. But some people actually use these boxes for artwork. They will, you know, add them into the back drop of their, you know, display cases. A lot of things that can be done. And I used to be a retailer, so it also, you know, helps me wanting to know whether or not I'm going to showcase them, this in my store or just chuck it in the back and, and have the statue out. So there's a lot of different reasons why I do it. Those are just some of them. This is just, yeah, I'll show you all the different sides here right now just to kind of give you a good idea on this. So again, front, it, they pretty much just turned the statue on four different directions and slapped it on four different sides. So yes, basic boring box art. It's really not not that fun. The cool thing that this did come with that a lot of Sideshow statues don't is it came with eight little styrofoam corners that went into like when it went into the actual shipping box. Yes, it adds a little bit more weight dimension for shipping, but way less chances of anything breaking. There was actually a big gouge in my sh like cardboard shipper, and because of that inch gap space, like half an inch or whatever, like between it, I had no damage on my box art, which also means no damage to my statue. I really wish Sideshow would do this with all of their statues. I think it would save all of us, you know, just the horribleness of FedEx and UPS and the way that they literally just throw their freaking stuff around in their trucks. It's just being atrocious how many different times I've had to go after them for different breakage and damage. And especially with the prices that you end up paying, they should, you know, what you get to your doorstep should come exactly the way that it's shipped. Anyways, that's a little bit of my rant on that one. Again, boring box art. Could have done so much more with it. I would have loved to, again, seen like some kind of like space age setting in the background would have been fantastic. Not a lot, any facts for me really to kind of go into Boba Fett again, jump back and watch that last episode with the deluxe Hot Toys edition. He wasn't in Rogue One, which is so disappointing. Like they had, you know, Vader going back. They could have easily had tied him into that scene where Vader's floating in his little chamber. He could have been hired at that point or just walking out from meeting Vader at that. There could have just been this little cameo and us as, you know, um, I guess you could say bo bo having a Boba fetish is uh, a cute little hashtag I saw, but it's seriously, I would have loved to have seen him in that. It was really disappointing. Love the movie, so don't get me wrong. I loved Rogue One. I thought it was great. Now that we've gone over box art and we've talked a little bit about what I talked about on the last episode, let's go over and check out the breakdown of this statue. Oh, Boba, you sexy beast. On breakdown this week, this is a really a 50-50 statue for me. Usually I love them or I hate them. This one here though is so bizarre. I'm, I, I'm hoping by the end of this video and talking to you guys that I'll either sell it or keep it. We will find out. So this exclusive version, this is the Empire Strikes Back version. He comes with the EE3 Mark II blaster, which is the one I'm holding in my hand here. You can see it in the picture. I love this blaster more than I like the one that's on the statue. I will showcase this one in the 360 video that comes after this part. 
This one here, they're both incredibly done. I love the detailing on them. Actually, I think the paint job on this hand is probably the best paint job in this whole statue, which says something in itself. It slots right in there with a the magnet. It holds really well. I, you will have to be careful because these little pieces, as much as they're plastic as arm guards here, um, they might be polystone, but I'm pretty sure they're plastic. You do have to be careful that you don't scratch that when you're putting the, the blaster in because the, the back part of the gun here kind of goes almost up against it. So yes, just like all the deluxe 12-inch um, figures, you need to kind of pull that back a little bit, slide it on, and then pull that forward and just be really careful. The bl other blaster, which you can see in the picture here, which is the one that comes with the exclusive and non-exclusive version, it's really cool but it still kind of reminds me of a potato gun i don't know why i think it's just such a big barrel on it but i this one's my favorite i really love this one so that's the one that would be in the statue all the time the next piece here which is again that major 50 50 one on this one it's fully plastic it's not polystone and the reason for this which makes me like it is it moves and swivels like it completely here i'll kind of You can move it up, down, side to side. And you know where I'm going with that. Everybody is watching this right now. It's really cool though, because realistically, if you are featuring it in a display case and you want to have them like scoping out Ben Kenobi or somebody else, you, you can actually point his head in the cabinet and really make him be looking at that person. And it gives such a dramatic effect to it. Whereas, you know, with the polystone, it's a fixed location that it's looking and you really kind of makes it sometimes a little bit harder for you to display statues even if they're in a grouping together without having a really large space to have them kind of you know moved around and deeper it's it's harder when you're lining them up row to row so i love it and i hate it the paint job on it is really really well done i like the aging of the denting i can't tell which of it's just plastic and what's paint so that's a little bit throwing it feels cheap because it's plastic but i like it at the same time Normally, I prefer little things like this here, like the arm piece, even the gun would be fine if it was plastic, but I still want it to be as much polystone as possible because you are ordering a statue, not a figure. And with the figure, you just expect it to be plastic. Little things like the cat on Catwoman, like I'm okay with that because it's gonna last, it's not gonna break, and it's gonna work. The next piece that I'm gonna go over here is the cape. This is awful. Fabrication from Sideshow is normally really impressive. The sewing job on it is so good. This is terrible. You can see it in this picture here. The underside of it is completely not edged. It's the cutting of it is so bad and it's fraying and it just looks like garbage. It's terrible. I'm so sorry, Sideshow, but this is the edging on it and where they tried to do the damage. It looks like somebody just took a pencil and like went through it or a cat shoot on it. It looks, it's just, out of all of the Boba Fett's 12 inch ones, statues, the Mythos one, Mythos, I'm probably saying it wrong. They're really, really well done. This is not good. I'm just, I find this to be so poorly, poorly done. The next piece here is this back jet pack is really good. I do like the paint job on it. There's only one weird kind of like splosh up at the top where it actually looked like somebody accidentally hit their brush against it and went, oh crap, we kind of have to leave it there. It's not that big of a deal. It's the top of it. You'll kind of see it a little bit in the picture here. All in all though, I really like it. The only thing is the straps that hold it on get lost because of the angle of the poly stone and they're just kind of behind it. Um, actually, you know what? I'll take a shot of it here. Um, you can actually see the inside slot of it and the way that they're just kind of hanging it's a little bit odd but it still works the body itself all these little um, pieces and attachments that are in the fabricating piece like a, on his costume are, are plastic and that's okay they're gonna last a lot longer his little gun off the side here the gun which you can see in this video the knee pads uh, a lot of the different pieces there are plastic his arm guards his chest piece here actually no, correct me, uh, the, that is poly polystone actually on there. And that makes sense because it matches with the polystone jetpack. It's the fabrication on this, don't get me wrong, the, the actual body is really well done. It's really nicely seamed, edged, all these little pockets, all these 
they're really well done. I, I have no complaints on the actual body part there. There actually is a little bit of Velcro here to tighten up this costuming. I'm not really sure why. Maybe that's just for authenticity of the actual costume. All in all, that side of it's really great. There are pegs for both feet in this, this body. It actually slots in. Here's a better shot of the front of the statue, kind of like little bits of the, the front and, and bottom of the feet there. And now you'll see a little bit more in the back from the, the feet, kind of like lower version of him there. The body is great. I love the pose. I love the stance. I think it's beautiful. I, I wouldn't change that at all. This platform is really cool. The base, which is the next piece, this thing is massive and really well weighted. I love the way that it is. The only downfall to it is the paint is as bad as this cape. It's terrible. It's like, it's so just like globbed on paint pieces here. You, you can see a bunch of them in the picture when it comes to the bottom part of the base in the, in the white here. It's, I don't know who was painting this because a lot of the stuff that's come out from Sideshow in the last like two years now is being quite impressive. I know there was a bit of a, you know, gong show there for a couple of years where things were actually coming really badly, but like there's no washing on this. There's no dry brushing. There was a lot of easy stuff they could have done to have made this base pop so well and i guess you could take it into somebody you could get them to paint it that actually wouldn't be too difficult but all in all it's pretty bad the only separate part to the base is this antenna which i'll pull out here it's going to move them here a little this here is really weird i don't understand why they even put it on and, and painted it the same color it really kind of like off centers it a lot more like this is all just like a matte weird black with a little bit of dry brush chrome but this is just all weird white and gray and then the antenna looks like you left your millennium falcon in the 80s out in the sun too long and it's all weirded and yellowed and and not so good so that's i probably wouldn't have this or i would paint it have it painted to match the black and have a little bit of a, a balance in the color scheme there so you can see that there in that picture as well. If I haven't shown it already, you're seeing it again. The colors don't really match. They don't, it's obviously whoever painted this part of the base and this part of the base were on a totally different assembly line compared to the paint on these other pieces. It's just weird. And the matte black and some parts don't even have any dry brushing on them. It's really is a fail on the base, but again, an easy fix if you know somebody who's good at painting. They could really make this be one incredible piece. So yes, if, if I were to keep the statue, which at this point I'm probably going to sell it, I would get the cape refabricated and I would get somebody to do the base. If you did that, this would be one majorly epic looking statue. But to go on eBay right now to pay $800 for something and to, well, seven to $800, and then to have to do that much work into it is a little not worth it for me, unfortunately. So that's all the different pieces of the statue we've gone over and break down right now. This is so odd that I get to take my time. Normally I'm speaking a mile a minute because it's freezing and I'm actually quite warm and it's really nice in here. You've gone, we've gone over that, we've gone over box art. Now you get to see 360 video of all the different sides of this statue with the exclusive blaster here on Shoutouts.
If you love this video, make sure to click that subscribe button below and also check out our new segment every Friday, which is pre-orders and prototypes here on Braddock Media. Leave a comment in the comment section, give a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I will see you all next week.